Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Taylor. He's an independent candidate running for MLA in the riding of Boundary Similkameen. The BC election is being held this Saturday, October 19th. His website is SeanTaylor.ca. He's on Twitter, slash X, at Sean underscore Taylor underscore MLA. On Facebook, at Sean Taylor MLA. His YouTube channel is Sean Taylor 17 Sean, welcome to the Goddard Report. Hey, thanks for having me, Jim. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and what's your background? Um, yeah, for the past 25 years, I've been a paramedic, a firefighter, uh, 16 years as an emergency nurse. And I spent two decades as a reservist in the Canadian Armed Forces. I, I got involved politically uh, in 2018. I joined the People's Party of Canada, and uh, I ran in Boundary, Sim- uh, not Boundary, Sim- um, South Okanagan, West Kootenai, in the last two federal elections. What made you decide to run as an independent? After getting involved uh, at the federal level, um i i started i joined the bc conservative party in 2019 and yeah we're trying to trying to make changes and uh alert the public to things that were going on within government um the the radical transformation that the conservative party's undergone in the last little bit uh john rustad asked me to run and the changes that we've seen in the last year of the bc conservative party Um, A lot of the people that have been fighting the fight and articulating what's been actually going on have been removed and replaced um, with former Liberal candidates. And I was asked uh, by several people to run as an independent. And there's actually quite a few of us for the first time uh, since 1903. British Columbia is actually moving towards an independent model. So um, it's not going to happen overnight, but it's quite exciting watching... um, yeah, watching all these independents stand up and uh, talk about the issues that's going on. Are the other candidates you're running against constrained by their parties and what they can say and do? Very much, right? Uh, all the part, all the mainstream parties are whipped, and uh, you have to toe the company line. Um, it's been quite frustrating, actually. Um, we haven't had an all candidates forum. Uh, here in this riding for the entire election. They've all been cancelled. The other candidates aren't willing to participate. Uh, the closest we got was in Karameas. Um, uh, Rolly Russell, the incumbent NDP, he showed up, and the Green Party candidate, myself, um, the Conservative Party candidate, whose hometown it was, didn't show up. And they've been instructed not to, not to engage publicly. They're just running on the brand, and it's, uh, yeah, it's quite frustrating. Um, not being able to have public debate about what's going on. They're, uh, they've, squelched, they've squelched debate pretty well in this province. How did all the candidate uh, town hall debates go? We haven't had any. We How haven't come? had any. So why not? <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very good question. <laughs> it's, um, <clears throat> we, had, uh, we had a tour down here a little while ago with Dr. Stephen Malthouse. He was uh, giving a presentation on um, uh, legislation that's been coming out of Victoria over the last few years. And I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to have an all-candidate debate. Um, so invitations were sent out to everyone, and they didn't, yeah, they didn't bother to show up. Um, they, they were, we were actually kicked out of one of our venues, and then afterwards we, we ended up holding it in a legion, and the president of the legion uh, printed a, an apology letter in the local paper. Like, it's, you're not allowed to talk about what's going on in your province these days. And, you know, and the, 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 um, the Chamber of Commerce in different areas, you know, they tried to put things on, but, uh, yeah, the, the candidates weren't responding, weren't uh, responding to the requests. So we, act, we actually haven't had one in this riding. It's, uh, it's quite disappointing because I think people uh, deserve the opportunity to um, confront, you know, their, their, their sitting members and as well as, you know, ask questions of people applying for the job. How are we going to ever fix the problems that exist in our province if we're unable to talk about them? What do you feel are the main issues? When you look at, when you look at the, 
legislation that's been coming out, there's been a gross erosion of personal sovereignty. Um, over the last four years, we've uh, we've seen significantly um, increased government overreach in almost every spa- aspect of our lives. Um, I think this needs to be rolled back immediately. Um, I think one of the biggest issues for most British Columbians right now is health care. And what we're seeing happen within healthcare is absolutely incredible, right? Like hospital closures, um, emergency departments, you know, closing regularly. Like they post schedules. Um, you can go online and find out which day your hospital, your emergency department in Oliver is going to be closed over the next month, right? Like the, the critical staff shortages that have been a- exacerbated by these mandates held longer than any other jurisdiction in the world. Um, and the consolidation of powers and in June, they just, you know, uh, amalgamated is it, 12 colleges into two and elimination of all elected uh, health care members and replacing them all with government appointees. Right. The um, this bill 36, the new health professions act, it uh, it's disincentivizing from healthcare workers coming to work in this province and causing many to flee. Right. You, uh, your, your healthcare decisions should be based on discussions between you and your doctor, not what Tedros and the WHO tells Teresa Tam to tell Bonnie Henry to tell your doctor what to say, right? This top-down approach and consolidation power, consolidation of power is alarming. And, you know, I think these trends that we're seeing are just going to continue. I don't see this abating anytime soon, unless we start taking drastic measures to turn this ship around. What do you plan to do for the riding of boundaries to Milkameen if you're elected? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to uh, work with other, other members of the legislative assembly to repeal bill 36. Um, We just had a fire scare here down there. Not that long ago. I think there's a lot of low hanging fruit for uh, fire mitigation strategies that would uh, increase the, the fire safety in uh, in our local communities um, and working working with with municipal governments and provincial um, to be able to implement these strategies and make communities safer this uh, we, we look at discussion now starting to realize that this dumping massive amounts of opium on the streets is uh, not working and I hope to uh, help expedite this uh, these policies in being modified to actually help people and uh, not enable uh, destructive behavior. There's there's a lot of stuff to do, and uh, yeah, I'm willing. I'm I'm excited to get at it. Now there seems to me there's a distinct lack of engagement uh, with so many elections now, where politicians feel it's their right to remain silent. How can you vote for people who don't want to appear in public and ask or, and answer questions? I don't know, Jim. Yeah. There's a lot of things going on today in British Columbia that I'm I'm afraid I can't speak intelligently about. Um, the lack of awareness that is going on. Like I just you look at the level of ridiculousness that we deal with. Like we live in a jurisdiction where cocaine is legal, but raw milk will land you in jail. We live in a jurisdiction where you know. Apparently, during this massive health crisis, our, our our government fired thousands of healthcare workers. We we live in a jurisdiction where our public education system, you know, introduces gender confusion and encourages the mutilation of children. It's we we live in a jurisdiction where uh, corporations are having their payrolls subsidized uh, by taxpayer dollars to employ people who just came here to work for them disincentivizing them to be able to hire like i've got people complaining everywhere it's like you know my 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 kids can't get a job in this town because they yeah they don't get government subsidies for their wages like the foreign workers do like you look at these you look at these policies and all these ridiculous things that are going on in our province and everyone just seems to be going along with it and you know yeah we're in we're in the middle of election and you can't even get the other candidates to come out and talk in public about these things, it's um, it's quite alarming. And the apathy that I see, like you, you you nailed it, like the disengagement. People don't seem to be really caring about it, and I don't understand why. Because I see, you know, 
I see the 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 impact that it's having on people, and <clears throat> maybe they're just so numb, right? Like, and this isn't just a British Columbia thing. You look, it seems like every week there's a scandal within the federal government that just a few short years ago would have brought the federal government down. And now it's just like, okay, on to the next news cycle. So whether people have just begot, become so numb that, um, you know, apathy and, and nihilism are just <laughs> defense mechanisms because they don't, uh, they don't have the bandwidth to deal with the ridiculousness anymore, I'm, I'm not sure. But, you know, I would encourage people to engage to pay to pay attention, um, you know, and there's a lot of people that I run into, fr- friends of mine included, right? They're just like, um, yeah, I'm not voting for you. I'm not voting for anyone. I refuse to participate. And it's like, okay, well, <laughs> we've seen throughout history, if we continue on this trajectory, at some point, you're going to be forced to participate. So, um, yeah, I would encourage you to, to re-engage. How important is it for people to vote for the candidate instead of the party? I think it's very important. Um, you know, we, uh, we've been using these teams a long time, and I think what's transpired in our country and in our province over the last few years has exposed that the teams, you know, may be, may be captured operations and not working for the constituents' best interests. Um, that's not to say that there aren't good people in the parties, um, I would do it on an individual basis, right? And right now we've seen, you know, with the amalgamation of the liberals and the conservatives, um, they've released a lot of liberals back out into the wild that are running as independents. So not all independents. So just because the candidate's an independent <clears throat> doesn't mean they're, they're the best candidate. I would, yeah, I would judge each person by their fruits, right? And the thing that's so exciting right now is you've got... You know, in a few ridings anyways, like down here in Boundary Similkami, myself, um, Kootenai Central, uh, Corinne Mori, who helped develop the, the health care platform for the British Columbia Conservatives and who has been taking the fight to them for the last three and a half years. Roger Harrington in Penticton Summerland, Sherry Roy. These are the ones that I know because these are the ones that have been fighting for British Columbians for the last three and a half years. They didn't just start with this election, right? Uh, Corinne and myself are fired emergency nurses, and we see what's going on within BC healthcare, and we've been trying to expose it to the public. So um, you've got people that are fighting for you. You've got people that are willing to storm the beach for you. All you have to do is ask them, right? We've been doing it for free for the last three and a half years anyway, right? We're not going anywhere. This is the, the things that we see happening in our province, it's killing British Columbians, right? The leading cause of death from 15 to 59-year-olds is opium overdose. And the government's response is to dump an unprecedented amount of narcotics on the street under the guise of safe supply. We've seen this throughout history. It's called an opium war, right? We just seem to be waging it on our own, on our own uh, population. Like these things that are happening, there's a reason why people are starting to get involved and say ser- significant change needs to come. So, you know, as, as far as being able to determine who the best candidate is, um, they've done a pretty good job of keeping this low-key and us out of the public eye. Like, I, I had a meet-and-greet in Grand Forks yesterday, and people coming up, and it's like, yeah, I just heard about this today. I didn't even know you were running. We, we are at a distinct disadvantage when it comes to advertising dollars and brand recognition and things like that. But moving forward, I think you should vote for the best person in your riding, whether they're an independent or whether they're a party member. Because like I said, there's good people fighting everywhere. um, And you should choose the best one. Unfortunately, you have to hear them (laughs) to be able to determine, you know, the quality of their character. And I would encourage I would encourage people, you know, because there's a lot of promises being made right now. There's a lot of money being throw right, thrown around right now. You know, you can say a lot of things. Um, I think we will know them by their fruits. And um, are you happy with what they've done over the last three years? So We're hearing there's mechanisms being used in this BC election that have been linked to fraudulent elections in other jurisdictions. What's the best way for people to vote if they want their vote to count? That's a very good question, Jim. I, um, I'm voting on election day. I, uh, you know, I've been on several meetings with scrutineers um, from Alberta 
that have been engaging uh, with groups here talking about serious concerns that they had during their last provincial election and the cheating that went on there and and all these things and i just you look at you know throughout history we've done it you show up you vote at the place you're supposed to vote and the ballots are counted by people and it and it happens that that's the way we've done it and you look at all these things that have been introduced um the mail-in ballots the vote anywhere app the um the electronic tabulators and several days of advanced pollings where there's no way you can have scrutineers like the army of scrutineers that would be required to scrutinize these things. There's a reason why there are scrutineers, right? And you look at this and it's like, can you have confidence in this? And that's a, that's a question that I, I can't ask, right? Like these changes that have been made do not increase integrity. They decrease it. So um, I think one has to ask themselves, why, why have these measures been taken? And they'll give you, oh, it's just to make it easier to vote. And yeah, they'll have, <laughs> they always have good excuses for the things that they do, whether they, they're the, the actual reasons or not. Um, yeah, I'll leave you to judge, but, um, you look at, you look at the, the framework that we have now. And, uh, I think, I think in its integrity is in question. You could be the lone voice in the legislature standing up for the people, the strategic vote for B.C. in Boundary Somilkameen. How important is it for people to get out and vote for you? I think it's, I think it's very important, and not, and not just me, right? Um, I get it. There was, uh, there was years I always felt it was my duty to vote, and I would show up, and uh, there, was, there was a few times there where I just destroyed the ballot, right? I didn't think anyone deserved my vote, but I showed up. Um, you know, what we see happening right now um, in, in a few ridings across this province is you've got, you've got people that are dedicated to making change and are willing to fight for you. And I think, yeah, I think you'd be remiss if you didn't, if you didn't support them, right? If you, you know, like if you're going along with the narrative and you think everything cool and you you like what's what's happening then yeah support support the legacy parties that brought us here but if you're looking around and you see problems and you would like to see some change i would uh yeah i'd say vote for the agents of change that uh have been fighting this fight for a while now we'll have more with sean taylor right after this don't miss out stay informed Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with independent candidate Sean Taylor. Sean, because you've worked as a paramedic and as a nurse, what do you feel we need to do to get the, the health care system back into a healthy state? <laughs> Healthcare is pretty top heavy, right? There's a lot of rent seekers there that just they find their little niche and people building little empires and stuff like that. Um, and it takes away it takes away from frontline resources. Uh, we've got redundant bureaucracies in most layers of healthcare. Um, there's the throttling that's occurring with Bill 36 and the disincentivization of people to move here to work is is exacerbating these critical staff shortages that we're seeing too. Bill 36 has got to go. I think that's the, the first and foremost. Also, I think it's an incredible time for health care. What we've witnessed over the last few years, I think we're beginning to see the change in, allopath, in allopathic medicine. There's suppressed modalities and uh, technologies and medications that um, have been come, coming to light over the last little bit, and people are starting to look at health care differently. I think this uh, this Rockefeller system that we've been on for the last, you know, several decades, I think is about to change rapidly. And I, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be better for uh, better for Canadians. And how that how that transformation uh, takes place and at what pace remains to be seen. It's a very, very it's a trillion dollar industry. Right. So there's going to be a lot of mayhem along the way as they struggle to maintain um the grip on the money, but um, I'm quite excited about the 
about the changes we see coming on the horizon. How is the best way for people to keep in contact with you and follow you? Um, like you mentioned, uh, yeah, I've got a Facebook page. I've got a YouTube page um, on my website, um, seantaylor.ca. I'd also like to say it's not it's probably not a very good political move, but there was a lot of people that were coerced into health care decisions that they didn't want to make over the last few years. And there is amazing doctors and scientists all over the world that are working on uh, detoxification programs and uh, protocols and supplementation to be able to mitigate some of the the health the adverse um, health consequences that people have been experiencing. I've got a resource page on my website, and I would encourage anyone who's having uh, who's having health difficulties right now um, to check it out, and uh, they might find some resources there that uh, they find helpful. Sean, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate it. We'll see on the 19th how this goes. It's kind of a black box to me. I, I don't, uh, I'm getting support from places that I didn't think I would and places that I thought I would. I'm not getting support. And it seems like things are in shift right now. I'm curious to see how this works out. My guest has been Sean Taylor. He's an independent candidate running for MLA in the riding of Boundaries. So Milkameen, the BC election, is being held this Saturday, October 19th. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you so much for listening. We're on YouTube at Talk Digital Network. You can send questions for our guests or for us to info at HouseStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.